Good morning, everyone. I'm Tian Hui. Today, our group are going to do a presentation for general microbiology. Microbes are the future. Our group leader is Wen Xuan, and our group members have me, Kelly, Singwei, Chloe, and Yuzana. This is our title, which is Variola Virus, Unveiling the Deadly Potential in Bioweapons. This shows a table of contents that we are going to share later, which have introduction, microorganism description, how the microorganism is applied in bioweapon, future prospect of the microbes, recap, and finally, the final thoughts of our group. Let me start with the introduction. Smallpox is one of the most devastating diseases known to humanity and caused billions of deaths before it was eradicated. It is believed to have existed for at least 3,000 years. It remains of clinical concern because of the potential for release and weaponization. It was contagious, which means that it can spread from one person to another. This disease presents with a non-specific febrile prodrome of high fever, chills, vomiting, abdominal pain, headache, and backache. The skin lesions occur one to three days later and first begin on the forearms or face and spread to the rest of the body. Most people with smallpox recover, but about three out of every 10 people with smallpox die. Many smallpox survivors have permanent scars over large areas of their body, especially their face. Some are left behind. The reasons for selecting bioweapon as our field is because we were inspired by the outspread of coronavirus. We were concerned about whether coronavirus is a Chinese bioweapon. Okay, so what is bioweapon? Bioweapons are devices or agents used or intended to be used in a deliberate attempt to disseminate disease producing organisms or toxins using aerosols, food, water, or insect vectors. Their mechanism of action tends to be broadly through infection or intoxication. Bioterrorism involve the deliberate release of bioweapons to cause death or disease in human animals or plants that's all for my part thank you hi guys my name is chloe and today i'd like to introduce the taxonomy of smallpox it is a family of pox worthy too first let me introduce the structures of the smallpox it is over brick shaped particles with a geometrically corrugated outer surface next here come to the characteristics of the smallpox it is enclosed brick shapes between 240 to 300 nm and have a complex internal structures including a double string DNA genomes and the ends joined by covalent connections. Hi, I'm Wen Shen and today I'll be talking about the history of smallpox. Smallpox is an acute contagious disease caused by the Varola virus, which is a member of Autopox virus family. It was one of the devastating diseases known to humanity, and it has caused millions of deaths before it was eradicated. It is believed to have existed for at least 3,000 years, and in the late 1700s, Edward Jenner has demonstrated that cowpox virus could vaccinate people against smallpox. Vaccinia virus eventually replaced cowpox as the viral agent used for smallpox vaccination. Although genetically distinct from cowpox, the origins of vaccinia are uncertain. 
The last naturally occurring case of smallpox was found in Somalia in 1977. In 1980, the World Health Organization declared smallpox is eradicated and it is the only infectious disease to achieve this distinction. This remains among the most notable and profound public health successes in history. Moving on to the mechanism of action exerted, smallpox transmission occurs through airborne respiratory droplet secretions or direct contact with lesions or contaminated formites. Infectious viral particles are released from sloughing of oropharyngeal lesions and resultant aerosolization of viral particles. Transmission can occur from the onset of lesions until all crusts have sloughed. After viral entry through the oropharynx or nasopharynx, the virus migrates to regional lymph nodes where it begins replication. An initial viremia occurs on day 3 to day 4 after infection and the virus will further disseminate to the bone marrow, spleen and additional lymph node chains. A secondary viremia occurs between day 8 to day 12 after infection and it coincides with the onset of fever and clinical evidence of illness. At this stage, the virus becomes localized in the oropharyngeal mucosa and small blood vessels of the dermis, resulting in the onset of fresh and clinical infectiousness. So, in history, smallpox was once used as a biological attack. A biological attack is an intentional release of viruses, bacteria or other germs that can cause sickness or kill people, livestock or crops. This can be done through aerosol sprays, in explosive devices, via food or water, or absorbent or injected into the skin. You can see that there are many ways because, as you remember, smallpox is an airborne disease. An example is during the French and Indian Wars between 1754 and 1767 where the British forces in North America distributed blankets that had been used by smallpox patients to initiate outbreaks among the tribes. These tribes were the in American Indian tribes. So you guess, epidemics occurred and this killed 50% of the many tribes. From this, you can see that actually smallpox is very effective as a bioweapon as it spreads very quickly and very effectively. So, the impact on humans. There is no positive effects of using smallpox as a bioweapon. The use of smallpox as a bioweapon would have catastrophic consequence for human populations. It spreads easily, being an airborne disease, from person to person and can cause high fever, fatigue, and a rash that can cause in scarring or even death. The negative effects of using smallpox as a bioweapon would be widespread illnesses, death, and social disruption. It would also likely result in fear, panic, and mistrust among the population. Hi, I'm Kelvi. Now I'm going to share with you guys the future prospect of the microbes in the next 10 to 15 years. It is important to note that smallpox has been eradicated in the wires and the only known remaining stock of the virus are kept in the secure laboratories such as WHO Collaborating Center on Smallpox and other pox virus infection at the CDC in the United States and the Russia State Research Center of Virology and Biotechnology Lab. There are some assumptions that are scientifically sourced or based on ongoing research in smallpox. Before smallpox was eradicated, the main form of treatment was supportive care, which aimed to relieve symptoms and provide comfort to patients. However, after the disease was eradicated, efforts have been focused on developing medical therapies to target the smallpox. In 2018, the United States approved tecovarimab as the first antiviral therapy specifically designed to treat smallpox. Although tecovarimab has only been fully tested in animal models, it has been given to human volunteers in a safety trial and used as an emergency investigational drug for patients who experience complications after vaccination.
The success of vaccination play a crucial role in the global eradication of smallpox. Various smallpox vaccines have been developed over time, starting with the method called variolation. Variolation involves deliberate infecting a healthy person who has no prior immunity with a mile from a smallpox obtained from a person with the disease. This approach aims to induce a less severe cause of the illness and build immunity in the individual. Now, I'm going to talk about is there any challenge that we need to be addressed. Firstly, it is important to note that live vaccine or virus vaccine can sometimes lead to adverse events. This adverse event can be serious and include conditions like generalized vaccinia, exomal vaccinatum, progressive vaccinia, and post vaccinia exophilitis. In addition, vaccine can sometimes cause symptoms in others who come into contact with the vaccine site unintentionally or through unintended inoculation. There is also a risk of transmission from a vaccinated mother to her fetus. In the post-eradication era, vaccine researchers utilize improved technology to develop tissue culture-based live vaccine. Live alternated virus vaccine, viral supplement vaccine product. It is to improve vaccine safety within the global context of an eradic eradicated infection. So to refresh, bioweapon is a contagious disease that are used as a weapon. It is mostly used during war, but it can also be used as a weapon for political assassination, infection of agricultural produce to cause shortages and economic loss, and etc. So smallpox can be used as a bioweapon. Smallpox is a contagious disease caused by the Firola virus, a member of the Ardopico virus are the pox virus family. It is, it is transmitted through airborne respiratory droplet secretions, meaning that the disease is spread through coughing, sneezing, laughing, and close personal contact with the person who is infected. The disease spread very quickly. So smallpox was used as a bioweapon in the past during the French and Indian Wars by the British Army. The British Army purposely spread blankets used by smallpox patients with the intention to spread the disease to their enemies. But smallpox have been eradicated and only like a small stocks are kept in secure Russian and American laboratories. This can also cause people to worry, but a vaccine has been developed for smallpox using cowpox.